oh, this one's going to be on my mind for a while. Okay. Late Night with the Devil. I first heard about this last year, and the concept was automatically interesting to me, and I was down for watching it. Then I forgot about it, then I found out about it again, or was reminded about it again. I think it's getting a limited theatrical release maybe this weekend. I saw it on my theater app as something that's coming, or maybe it's here already, and it's going to be on Shudder as of April. Now, I do subscribe to Shudder, but I got a an email that there was a screener available if I wanted so I did ask for a screener and took a few days to watch it because my time has been very limited so I've had to actually kind of just parcel it out bit by bit and I just finished it tonight okay I'm just gonna come right out and say it I was super impressed with this movie I loved the atmosphere of it I love the setting. I love that 70s vibe, that 70s feel. And from what I understand, this is David Desmalchin's first lead role. He's the main character in here, and this is this was a perfect role for him. I mean, he fits this so well. You know, he's got that sort of quirky type of look and personality on screen, and he fits the horror genre really well. From what I understand, he's a big horror fan, so that's like a huge thumbs up for me already. And it was interesting to see him play this part of a character named Jack Delroy. And what was interesting about it, one of the very first things I wrote was it's weird weird to see him playing a normal character because in so many of the things I've seen him in he he's played a, an eccentric type of person uh the very first time I ever saw him was obviously in the dark night and I never forgot him he had a teeny tiny little part in there and I never forgot him that's how much of a presence he had in that limited amount of time that was given to him so I've followed his career as it you know he pops up oh there's that guy he's a really good actor and it's been cool to see him in different roles he's really funny in Ant-Man he's got this ability to just kind of melt into his roles and with this story late night with the devil the premise is he plays a late night host who is his ratings are going down he's had some personal things happen in his life and he's kind of struggling to get back on top again or, or become competitive again with like let's say Johnny Carson and on Halloween night I think it's 77 he has this schedule planned out that it's going to involve stuff that has to do with supernatural like talking to a, a person that's possessed uh, someone who can do like spirit readings and things like that and as the episode continues things just get a little bit more and more off the rails and creepy. And I didn't watch a trailer for this. All I knew was the premise. So it's like a 90 minute, 92, 93 minute film. I was listening to an interview that he had with Film Threat a couple weeks ago, and he was saying how it's shot in real time. It, like the amount of time that you spend watching it is supposed to be the amount of time that was really happening or, or something like that. And so what you're watching on here is supposed to be uh, footage from that particular night on Halloween in 77. In the beginning, there's quite a bit of exposition. That doesn't necessarily work well in stories, like let's say books that I'm listening to or reading. But in this, it worked well because it's kind of told in a documentary style where it's telling you a bit about Jack Delroy, his personal life, his role in late night TV. And then it heads right into the broadcast that they're working on. And so what you see is you see them live the broadcast and then when they take a commercial break you see what's going on behind the scenes so there's all of this interesting stuff that's happening oh we need to make sure we do this and oh let's do this and don't do that and and you get a feel of what it's like on late night television from the moment that I started watching it I had this feeling of unease the whole time well partly because I already knew sort of the premise but also because there is this uncomfortable feeling 
when you're watching it because you have people on there, uh, like one of the earlier guests that comes on there is someone that's supposed to be able to contact the spirits or whatever. And then you have a skeptic on there and then things happen and you're wondering, is this like, is this supposed to be part of an act or is something really happening? Now you do get the sense that something is really happening for much of this broadcast because the camera will do these weird glitchy things. And so, you know, oh, this is something's at play here. And then when it really starts to get super creepy is when there is a character that's brought onto the show who is possessed or has a demonic spirit living within them. It's this young girl and she's like a teenager and she, her handler or the person that is like her therapist and someone who I guess is like, like a parent figure to this child. And that girl is creepy, creepy creepy like you just see her like the acting in here was so good you guys this girl I don't know if I've seen her in anything else before but boy she really played that part well she had these odd looks on her face and she would talk like even when she's talking in her normal voice she would talk in a very like it left you unsettled even her body movements like when she came out onto the stage at the beginning it's like ooh something's off with here obviously something's off with her she's supposed to be possessed and she would have these you would you would catch glimpses of her looking at jack or looking at other people and you're and you have this or i did had this little ooh, like chill up the spine just because you didn't know what the heck was going to happen and you didn't know completely what was going on with her so i really appreciate the acting in here. David also did a great job. He, I, I've never seen him in anything where he did a poor job. He's a wonderful actor and he did a really good job in here and he plays his role really well. You sympathize with him in some respects, but then at the same time, you're kind of feeling a little bit turned off by him using certain events to his to his advantage because he's so concerned about the ratings for his TV show. And so you see him doing things that you know at your core aren't good and decent for him to be doing. But at his core, he doesn't, he's not like a bad person. He's just doing things that aren't so great. <laughs> Something else I appreciated about this, I've already touched on the runtime, is that the pacing is really well done. It does not feel like there's any fat on this film. You're not bored. I, well, okay, I wasn't bored. From the moment I started watching it, I was very captivated. Even though I did watch it in chunks, I had to force myself to stop because I just, you know, for time, for purposes of my schedule, I couldn't watch it all at once. But the entire time I was watching it, I was very captivated. I was very drawn in. I was just, I, I can imagine, you know, that look that you see people get on their face when they're watching something that's just enthralling. I'm sure that's what I look like because I was just like, what is going on? What's going to happen? Oh, was this real? Wow, that's really creepy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> These are the things that were going on in my brain. So yeah, I... I recommend this film. If you're a horror fan, I think you will enjoy it. This was an indie film and it was shot on a very small budget. And I'm sure that ties in with some of the controversy that has been attached to this movie. I have seen people give it negative reviews just because there was apparently some AI imagery used in this film. I have honestly, not much of an issue at all with people who use AI imagery in the creative process. Well, I'm very skeptical about where I think people might end up letting AI go. I do see the benefit in it. And especially if you are, are on a very limited budget and you have this creative product that you want to get out there, but your funds are limited. I have zero issue at all with people implementing a tool like AI in order to accomplish this thing thing that they need to accomplish. I would have never known it was AI if I hadn't been hearing about it. Apparently it was like three images or something. You've got people running around saying, oh, it's dripping with AI. It's full of AI. I, I don't know that I buy into that claim. And even if it is, it did not affect at all my enjoyment of it. Yeah, AI is here for good and it's getting better and better. It's kind of scary in some respects, but I personally don't feel 
that it's going to take over the human element in creative processes. Just like with VFX and green screen, I kind of view it in much the same way. It's a tool that can be used to expound upon or to prop up or make things better. I don't see it really overtaking completely the human aspect of storytelling. So I have no issue at all with whatever AI they used in here. The strength of this story is in the writing, the acting, the premise, and I really can't think of much to say at all. I didn't write anything down in the con, honestly. I almost feel like I would like to rewatch it. Think about what does the ending mean? I think I know what the ending means, but I don't want to get into that because I don't want spoilers. If you guys have a chance to see this, please do, especially if you're fans of horror. And also if you like to support indie filmmakers, I really do feel like this is a great time for independent filmmakers because Hollywood time and time again, big Hollywood time and time again, has dropped the ball in so many ways. And I feel like the door is wide open for great content to be brought to us, the viewers, by people who have great stories to tell. And even though they are limited on their budget, they can find ways to tell us these stories in an effective manner. A lot of times, the less money you have, the better your product can be. And sometimes it is that limit on the funds that are available that can end up bringing about something that is fantastic and will stay with us forever. Exhibit A, the Michael Myers mask. That doggone thing was bought for $2. They made some adjustments to it and we have this iconic figure with us now forever. And that was because they were limited on their budget and they had to think creatively. And a lot of times I feel like that brings us some of the best in storytelling. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I don't have much more to say, just that I don't necessarily feel like this needs a big screen experience in order to appreciate it. But if you can see it on the big screen, I do urge you to because that gives this film support. And if you subscribe to Shudder and you can't make it to the big screen, then check it out when it comes out on Shudder. This is one of the more solid horror films that I've seen lately. One of the other ones was uh, Talk To Me. That's another super solid film. I enjoyed this more than the latest Scream movies and Thanksgiving even, because it was fairly solid all the way through. And that's really what I appreciate a lot, especially in horror films, because so many horror films just can't carry it. They might start off good, but they can't necessarily bring it in to cross the finish line. So I feel like this one did, and I liked it enough that I wanted to talk about it. So this is me finishing up my talk about it, and I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.